Let's go on to Rome's. So it was boring and weird not to see the Vikings dominate uh, on Sunday, but we were able to watch the rest of the games, sweat some fancy teams, make a little bit of jelly beans on the side. It's good times, man. I'll also, just be just like everyone else, be in a cloud of chili chili farts. Spicy. Mm. Uh, so recapping week six NFL action, Monday Night Football pending. Back on Thursday night, remember when the Seahawks were 3-0 and and everyone said that they were the cat's ass and everyone said that they're going to challenge for the NFC? Nope. Nope. So the Niners, like we said, don't sleep on San Francisco. Like, they will get right. McCaffrey maybe comes back this year, but it really doesn't matter. They're a talented football team from soup to nuts, and you know Brock Purdy did the damn thing on the road. Hey, where are the 12s? Because what the hell do they call that stadium now? Because it used to be Quest, and it used to be CenturyLink, and it used to be Lumen. Is it still Lumen? doesn't matter. But, uh, I mean, aren't the Seahawks supposed to have the best home field advantage in the league? How come half of that lower bowl, and that's being generous, was red? Uh, also, they got the, here we go, Niners chant going on. It was, I was told that the Seahawks have the best fan base in the league, reliably, over and over. Although, I feel like people knew that uh, during the Legion of Boom, the whole 12s, 12s, 12s thing was just a little bit bandwagon -y. I, that, that's what I like about being a Vikings fan because if and when the Vikings win multiple Super Bowls, there won't be a bandwagon fan because there won't be a bandwagon because no one is cut out for this life. Hey, do you know why they have sidewalks? Because not everyone is cut out for life in the street. That's right. That's right. Because you, you wouldn't last a minute in the same time that they raised me in. Over in England, where I don't know, I guess the NFC North just owns England, I guess, but uh, the Bears allegedly beat the Jaguars 35-16. Now, everyone, everyone's like freaking out. Like, all of the insiders uh, are obviously rooting for Caleb Williams. Oh, don't the Caleb Williams September takes look stupid now? Or could it be? Just, just a little bit. Even though, yeah, respect Caleb Williams threw for four touchdowns. Good job. Uh, but could it be that Caleb Williams got to play the worst defense in the league? in Jacksonville, the third worst defense in the league the week before against Carolina, and the second worst defense in the league the week before that against the Rams. Could it be that? I don't know. I don't know, man. Like Everyone their mom talks about, ooh, the Bears are 4-2. Uh, also, the, their other one was week one against Tennessee when Will Levis threw the, the funniest pick six ever. I mean, Will Levis is a kind of historical run, man. But, yeah, obviously the Bears are legit, and the 5-0 Vikings who beat the Niners and the Texans and the Packers and the Jets, I mean, obviously they're just garbage. Yeah, that's how it rolls. Anyways, uh, then also you got, speak, speaking of garbage, so you got the Greasy Grime and Green Bay Packers. Hey, congratulations for getting to play the bad Cardinals at home. All right, so the Cardinals, I don't know what it is, man. Like, I I want to believe in Kyler, but they just keep falling short. Uh, at least Trey McBride is, is an absolute monster. Marvin Harrison got concussed in this game, which which really sucks, but I don't know. Like, Arizona, maybe they're they're a couple years away. I wanted to believe. And the Packers, hey, if the Packers are this good, so then the Vikings should get some credit for beating their ass uh, at Lambeau a couple weeks ago, right? Isn't that how things work? Oh, that doesn't. that's not how it works? Oh, it's very selective and you move the goalposts when it comes to the Vikings? It happens. Uh, Colts and the Titans. All right, so uh, jumping Joe Flacco goes out and gets a W through two touchdowns, and I don't know. Like, the, the Titans are obviously trash. The Colts I don't believe in, but uh, it, it was so funny, like, the, the Colts were on, or the Titans were on their own three-yard line with the last chance play, and they, they tried to do the whole lateral thing, but it's just funny. Watch Will Levis. Well, we'll, we need to have a petition. Like, Will Levis obviously is not good, but he needs to start every single week. Like, he's like White Jameis. Like, he does very stupid but entertaining things every single week. That's what happens. Oh, Tony Pollard, uh, 17 for 93 in touchdown. Viking? Or do we take Tajay Spears, even though he has no meniscus in his knee? or something like that. Uh, Texans went up to New England, put the bang thing on the Patriots. But that's beside the point because the Patriots, well, they, they beat Denver week one. I think that might be their only win. But Drake May actually looked pretty good, 20 uh, 33, 243, and through, through three touchdowns. Obviously, there's no talent around him. Obviously, there's going to be growing pains. But, I mean, at a certain point, yes, you do worry about the kid being safe, but just let him sling it. Like, you need to get him game reps. You need to get him. even bad game reps are, are still going to be good. And I, I understand worrying about turning him into another David Carr. Yeah, which uh, ironic since they, they played the Texans this week. But, you know, uh, and the Texans, I mean, Texans are 5-1. Guess what the one is? All right, so the Vikings, 
I mean, hey, don't sleep on that win against the Texans. That was a, a very impressive blowout win against a very impressive team. So that's just adding in, to the Vikings resume. Also, you got the Bucks and the Saints. This game was way more entertaining than uh, it, it should be. So the Bucks, I've always believed in the Bucks. Uh, I think that they're going to win the NFC South again this season, even though everyone their mom wants the Falcons to. But the Bucks moved to four and two, and uh, or Chad White was out, but. Sean Tucker, as well as our guy Bucky Irving, got things done on the ground. Baker had himself a, a big time game again, three twenty five and four. Oh yeah, Baker putting on a show yet again, and just Cleveland is just like, oh, we traded all these draft picks and gave a fully guaranteed contract to Deshaun Watson. Cool, but the Saints. Hey, remember when the Saints started out two and zero, and everyone's saying that uh, that Clint Kubiak is a future head coach? Spencer Rattler actually didn't look too bad though. Yeah, but uh, the, the box score of this is funny. So the Buccaneers were down 27-24 at halftime, and then they won 51-27. to uh, All the Saints points came in the second quarter. It's just a really funny box score. Also, speaking of the Browns, so Deshaun Watson is ass. Thank you. He, You can make a case that Deshaun is the worst starting quarterback in the league, uh, but also he's the one with the largest guaranteed contract, which is hilarious to me. But the Browns, uh, the Browns are just bad. And like they're, they're only... Like their only spark came from when Miles Garrett blocked that field goal, and then they returned it for a touchdown. But the Eagles, coming off the bye, a very unimpressive, uneven win. Like they have no identity on offense defensively, especially in the secondary. They're porous, but I don't know. They're they're able to survive. You know, Nick Sirianni chirping at fans in the crowd. Like you, you barely beat one of the worst teams in the league at home. Congratulations. Shut your mouth. Uh, in a fantastic game. So the Commies and the Ravens. So even though the Commies lost. Like th- this was the 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 Jane Daniels show. Like he is going to be a problem w- with the commies for many many years to come. He's he's a great leader. He throws a, a great accurate ball. I-, I do think that Cliff Kingsbury is cooking up something nice uh, with with that offense. Scary Terry getting uh, finally getting a quarterback. Austin Eckler showing off a, a, li- a little bit of a uh, little bit of spark that he he wasn't showing at, at the tar- tail end with the Chargers but the Ravens they get it done Lamar have himself a great de- game Derrick Henry a buck 32 and 2 on the ground Zay Flowers getting things do- done so yeah i mean Baltimore does seem to be back after the 0 2 start real off four wins in a row and how is that faith like Harbaugh always has his team playing hard and they're they're going to be a factor again in the in the AFC uh, speaking of Harbaugh so Jim Harbaugh of the Chargers left because he had an atrial flutter, which apparently he, ha- he had before uh, in a Niners game. But it was so weird seeing it pop up as Harbaugh questionable to return to the game. But he, he did. Uh, Chargers got a win on the road in division against the Broncos. I don't believe in the Broncos. I, I straight up just do not. Right. Uh, and the Chargers were serviceable. Herbert still dealing with that ankle sprain. But uh, Dobbins with 96 and a touchdown on the ground. Also, ooh, Kamani Vidal. Yeah, the rookie out of Troy uh, uh, caught a, a nice touchdown pass early in the in the first half. So maybe he'll be a factor uh, in fantasy moving forward. Uh, Steelers put the bang thing on the Raiders. It's kind of expected. And, uh, you know, people are complaining that, well, half the stadium, well, three-quarters of the stadium was terrible towels. Yeah, that's exactly what happens with the Raiders because every Raiders home game is a vacation for the opposing team. So – the, like, the fan base of the opposing team, they're just flying to Vegas, have a great weekend. They go see the game. and it's, uh, ooh, The absolute stone-cold nuts is when the Raiders host a Monday night game, which is probably going to be few and far between because the Raiders are bad. But you get that full weekend, you get the Monday night game, fly home Tuesday, you're good to go. You're good to go, man. But uh, Steelers, I actually think Justin Fields looking really damn good uh, at this point. Steelers, I mean, they're still – Without identity on offense, still sort of herky jerky. But you know, Najee Harris had his first hundred yard game in forever, right? Uh, getting things done. But the Raiders, I mean, they don't really have much to hang their hat on. Max Crosby shoving uh, coaches on the sidelines. But Brock Bowers nine for seventy one. Uh, I mean, that that's sort of a fantasy rule of thumb too. Is that rookie tight ends don't really produce. But Brock Bowers has come in and he's looked dynamite. He, he looks uh, elite, elite, elite. Uh, oh, maybe it's taking over for uh, singing Sam Laporta because Laporta looks like he regressed, although he caught a 52-yard touchdown. Uh, the Lions put the bang thing on the Cowboys. Whatever. Where This seemed very personal and weird, obviously because of what happened last year with the Dan Skipper ruled ineligible. Dan Campbell went for it 17,000 times, didn't get it. But, I mean, running up the score is one thing, and there, there is no such thing as running up the score in professional sports, right? If you don't want them to score, stop them. Like this isn't like fourth grade pop Warner football, right? But 
the way that the Lions did it, and then they're trying to have tackle eligible plays, trying to throw a touchdown to Taylor Decker, trying to get Penny Sewell on a hook and ladder. It's just, it's just clown shoes, right? I, I cannot wait until Flores and the Vikings humble this team on Sunday. It's going to be glorious. Uh, also, I think this game was less about the Lions being good because I am actually not sold on the Lions, but it's more about the Cowboys just being ass. Thank you. I mean, you pay Dak and CD all that money and you get nine points. You get zero offensive touchdowns. For shame. For shame, man. Uh, then you got the Falcons uh, taking care of the Panthers. I, I I know Falcons fans are fired up right now, but who have you played? Not saying I'm just saying. Uh, but and the Falcons uh, are uh, the Panthers. I, like, what, what's the point of playing Andy Dalton right now? It's the same thing as Drake May. Either Bryce Young is the guy or he isn't. If he's not the guy, trade him at the deadline, right? Because otherwise, what are you doing here? Try, you should be trying to get him some experience and some reps because you're not going to win with either guy, but – Find out if Bryce Young is a guy for next year or if you have to go out and find a different quarterback. Like, hey, Panthers, you want to pay Sling and Sam Darnold $55 million a year? Why not? Woo. Get after things. Uh, and then uh, Thursday night. Uh, so, oh, no. Sunday Night Football was honestly the most boring Sunday Night Football game that I've ever seen. Like, I understand that they're banking on Burrow and the Bengals being good, but the Bengals are ass. Thank you. Uh, the, the Giants are worse. Uh, well, the Giants have a bunch of interesting pieces. Uh, obviously, neighbors didn't play, but it's being held back by the quarterback. Like, d- did the Giants just sign D- uh, Sam Darnold free agency in the offseason? I don't know. I don't know, man. But the Bengals, I mean, they're a flawed and boring team, but I don't know. Like, this was – this had snooze are written all over. Like, how like, how is that even Sunday night football? Like, what would have been a better Sunday night game? What would we have been? I, well, I guess Buccaneers Saints, but, of course, that's hindsight. Uh, I ooh, commies Ravens would would have been fantastic. Would have been glorious. Cowboys Lions, obviously, but I don't know. Maybe there's like some cowboy fatigue in prime time. I don't know, but I I understand that they're trying to capture the the New York market with the Giants, and they're still East Coast slash NFC East bias. But th- this there was like nothing with this game. It's out of conference. Two teams that only play each other like once every four years, and it's just stupid. It's ridiculous. Uh, Monday night, uh, you got the Bills and the Jets. Uh, speaking of dumb and ridiculous. Uh, but the Bills, uh, James Cook is dinged up. The Jets uh, just got Rob Salah fired. So, your know, first game of Jeff whatever. Jeff Ol- Olbrick, I think. Yeah, the former linebacker. Uh, what, what's funny is that Nathaniel Hackett still got to, his ass demoted. So, Rodgers basically got Salah fired for nothing. It's ridiculous. But uh, that's it. Uh, week six NFL recap. You guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value.